Oh, uh, tell me you're All obsessive right. without telling me you're obsessive. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. I have two guests today. They were former teammates, Lindsay and Pool Boy. What's going on, guys? Hey. What's up? Hey, so, um, Lindsay, so how do you pronounce your new last name? Because it was Grasses before. So what, what is the what, how do you pronounce the last name now? Well, technically, it's still Grasses. So I haven't oh, okay. officially changed it, but uh, Cuffrey, yeah, Cuffrey. Okay, because I know, I know it's, I know it was in your Instagram, and, and um, and so I was like, wanted to make sure I didn't want to butcher it. So I, but, I actually uh, changed it because of creepy people on IG. So <laughs> yeah, but we, we actually the last podcast, and even my wife has, have talked about like all the creepy stuff that goes on through Instagram through people. So, Fun but stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll not go from there, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So um, thank you guys for coming on. And uh, I know Pool Boy was just talking before the podcast that there were some like major changes going on on the leaderboard. So I haven't had the chance to look at it, but can you give us a little scoop on what's going on? Uh, yeah, actually, I literally before we go live, I get a text message from uh, Rafa <laughs> Sanson's wife, um, Selena, and she's literally like, "Dude." Uh, Patrick Vellner fell to 31st. And so I just like looked it up and, and yeah, shit. So uh, I, I know we have an athlete at my gym, a uh, female athlete at CrossFit Kindred, uh, Katrina Olson, who uh, is only five spots out. So she's like looking at or waiting for penalties to be assessed. And she was telling me, hey, they asked for a workout two, which I didn't think was going to be a issue in terms of like penalties um because it's it's freaking wall balls and burpee box jump overs there's not much to screw up there mm -hmm. um but then she told me they asked for workout one and i was like okay um there's going to be some shifting going on especially if you've been following like hiller's video about uh luis oscar mora yes um, i wanted to talk about that. that too yeah so uh yeah it looks like there are some uh some major penalties happening crazy so do you, do you think Luis is going to get some major penalties from that video that Hiller Dude, pointed he out? Should. It's so bad. Did you watch it? I saw little bits and pieces of it. Like he, he literally has the barbell. So if, if no one, if, if the listeners are, are, if you're watching right now and haven't seen the video, his, his barbell is like literally right in, like in front of his head the whole time. So it's yeah. not full and, extension. And, and I want to clarify, like, I'm not trying to bash Luis or anything like that. He had, you're an athlete, you're moving, you're trying to go fast. Right. At that point, I put more emphasis on a gym like proven, like to like, dude, you got to hold the standard like you see it. It's it's not even like it's hard to miss. Like it's pretty blatantly obvious, especially I can maybe give a little buffer on the snatches because it's going so quick. But those step ups were so bad. Well, now, why? Why didn't he like I know the CEO of the company was judging him, too, as well. And I, I believe from what the video of what I saw, he was kind of like in front of him. So obviously with the snatches, he, you can't really see the full extension kind of because of the angle he's at. So, I mean, maybe they need to do, he needs to go out at a 45 degree angle or someplace where he could see everything that's going on and then even review the tape instead of submitting it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they were doing. It's, it's pretty bad. I'm actually looking right now to see if um, he moved at all. And no, not yet. Oh, wow. oh, oh, actually, yeah. No, no, I was looking I was looking at the wrong score. Sorry. No, yeah, he, he's still in the same spot. He should get a penalty. I, I'd be shocked. Yeah. As, as bad as his workout one video was and his workout three video, he should unfortunately have his season end right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, but uh, but yeah, that's uh good good stuff. Good stuff. So uh so Lindsay, um Breaking news oh. on the Type One Lifting podcast. I know that's right. I know your CrossFit upgrade. Let's go. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, we we haven't talked in a year. I, I think it's been a little it's been over a year. year. That's wild. Yeah, ru roughly around there. So I know, um, you know, you still have. Did you did you change the gym to 1970? Is it still 1977? Yeah, it's or still 77. Yeah. Okay. And I I I saw a comment. I think you you posted it about the affiliate fee like increase oh yeah the increase yeah so um have you kind of changed your mind at all or like kind of what's your thoughts with the with the increase 
Yeah, I mean, I got over it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> at the end of the day, at the end of the day, really monthly, true. it's like one more person's membership per month, and I'm like, you know, exactly. Stuff, stuff goes up. We own businesses, you know. I I know how it goes. It's just obviously the initial. What bugged me, I think, the most is that it was like a month prior to the new year. I think that's what bugged me the most was mm-hmm. the just oh we're doing this and i feel like they do that a lot it's just they change things on the fly without any sort of heads up and i think that's kind of what bugs me the most but anyway i got over it. it's fine i pay okay it. okay because i knew because because i i i was talking about you through when they when we had um when i did a podcast with about the membership rate like fee increase and you, they, i you're like i don't know if this is even gonna be worth it anymore so, yeah, you know, I have my bitter moments. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. But uh, so so with um with the fee increase, like what as a gym owner do you expect to like have CrossFit do to help you, you know, improve your box and or just improve, you know, everything that goes around in your box? Uh, in my head, I see it as I pay to use the name, to be very blunt. That's what that's personally what I see it as. And that's so kind of that. <laughs> so, so they don't help they don't you don't want them to help you out with like you know trying to like some sales or like you know it's not, it's not that i don't want that i just uh, i will say i will say i did get one referral through the crossfit website so i'm very appreciative of that one member for that okay one and that's yeah big. yeah that's 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 big so yeah it's but something awesome. it's yeah. something yeah. So, so, um, so has the, have you seen like the, your box, like uh, the gym grow, uh, even more since the last time we've talked? Yeah. It's actually doing very well right now. I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy doing that full time at the moment and it's going very well. So, yeah. So you, are you there like almost like 24 hours pretty much? No, I wouldn't say 24 hours. I'm trying to, so I coach probably anywhere between seven to 10 per week classes. I don't like to overwhelm myself with coaching because you burn out very, very easy. I think a lot of people think gym owning is very simple and easy, and there's a lot more behind scenes that people don't see. So I try to balance it out well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I I know pool boy does a lot of coaching too. So how do you balance that out without not burning out through coaching? Sorry, one more time. You froze for a second. Oh, uh, you're good. Cow by, cow by yeah, yeah. So, how, like, how, like, I know you coach at like, you know, F45, you know, um, Matt Souza's like gym and like a bunch of other, bunch of other places. So, how do you manage not getting burnt out through like going to all those different places? Oh, my God. Um, well, it's, it's actually not too bad because the times that I do coach, um, I coach in the morning at a like PT style studio. Um, and I'm only there for about like three, four hours. And then I head over to the gym and I train. And then I'm at the gym for like four hours or so training. And then I head over to um, my CrossFit gym in the evening. And I coach like three classes. So it's broken up. So it's, it's really not that bad. Okay. I mean, that's, that's good. Set some time. So, so you train for like three to four hours or do you take like, just gonna say that. <laughs> yeah. So do you, do you take breaks yeah. in between? Like, do you eat something before? I, well, I know you eat like bananas with honey all over it. So there's literally just like fruit and, and, and honey and just quick little carbs in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how's the uh, HWO training going? Well, what's so funny is I actually, um, I decided to just switch over to Proven. So I ended up switching to Proven because the, the athletes at my gym, they just, they, they, that's what they do. So I'm like, why am I making myself miserable in the corner just doing these awful like HWPO workouts by myself when I can just do it, with, do Proven with them. So I just ended up just switching over to, to, to Proven. Okay. Okay. Do you still miss Myth, Misfit? I do. I do. If I, if I ever leave the gym, um, for whatever reason, um, I'll probably end up switching back to Misfit unless I end up finding some other training crew, but I would probably switch back to Misfit in all honesty. Yeah. So, um, so last year you were in Massachusetts with a team with Lindsay and a couple other people. So, um, Lindsay, can you, can you, I, so pool boy already talked about the story a little bit of like his version of it. So Lindsay, do you have, a version that you have of how you got the pool boy over to Massachusetts and uh, checking out the Boston Boston nightlife. So it was very much just before the open. And I remember I had a solid two others and we needed a guy and I always have Nate to jump in, but he is very much past his competitor days. But if we need it, he'll pop in. He just doesn't prefer to. So I was posting on, um, social media saying we were looking for a male, you know, in this general area. 
or like drivable at least. And I believe it was a mutual friend that DM'd me saying she might know someone given some strange circumstance, even though he lived nowhere near here. And I think that's how it started. Did she DM you then kind of connecting us? I don't even really remember. She did. It was Liz. Liz uh, yeah. DM. She, she DM'd me and, and asked me um, what I was doing for the open night. And I told her I had just I had just been uh, let go of my job at standard at standard strength as head coach um, for reasons I still to this day. So from there, I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do for the open. I mean, I had gyms obviously in the area that would lend me um, space to do the open. They're like always welcoming um, around here. Um, and then it wasn't until like, yeah, Liz hit me up. And then she asked me what I was doing for the open. And I told her I have no idea. And she said, Well, I have a team that's looking for another athlete. And I was like, Oh, cool. Um, where at? And she said, uh, the only caveat, it's, it's in Boston. And I was like, <laughs> oh, shit. So <laughs> went back and forth with it. She was just like, hey, um, just connect with them, see what happens. So we just started chit chatting. And man, we were like, literally trying to figure out plane tickets, uh, revenue of money, um, car, and like, literally within the span of like a day and a half, like everything just fell together. I got a car. <laughs> Lindsay offered me to coach there. I, off, I got a, a job offer at another gym in like Chelsea uh, to coach there. So I was just like, all right, I guess I'm doing this. So I did it. It's funny from, it's funny from my end because it's like this total random person on the internet that I'm DMing and we're like talking, Hey, like come be on our team. We need a fourth. And in my head, I'm like, there's no freaking way. Like we have no idea who each other, you're going to get on a plane the next like 48 hours and get here for before the open in my head. I'm like, even my husband, he's like, there's no way. Oh my God, no, there's no way. And then he kept shooting DMs and he was very positive about it. And I'm like, is this kid for real right now? Like, I'm like, I know nothing about this kid. He seems pretty athletic. I'm told he's athletic. So he could have been terrible for all we knew and just showed up and been an awful athlete. You know what I mean? To yeah, me, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, I, I had no idea. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at, at that point, I was so like, like depressed and down and out from losing my my uh my head coaching job. And and I think even when I was on the first first time on the podcast with you um you were I, at the I, gym I, yeah i was at the gym and i even told you like hey i had recruited uh these athletes to be a part of a team so i had literally brought a team over there myself um so to have that opportunity be kind of taken away from me i was like just like looking for almost every any olive branch that was like floating around um so then when this came up i was like all right i'm gonna do everything i can to make it happen and um man i couldn't be more more happy it was it was crazy when i told my parents the story they they thought i was like what you don't know these people how do you know they're not going to just rape you and kill you when you get there it's like <laughs> the risk i'm taking the it's so taking. wild it's so yeah. wild to think about now because it was so it was so much fun it might have been like my favorite season ever it was so much yeah fun. And, and we couldn't have vibed even more like yeah it was ridiculous from the moment we met like things just connected so easily. It was, it yeah. was fun. Yeah. And you two guys were connected uh, during the semifinals too, as well. So like when you guys, it was you, when you, you two guys were lifting together at the same time for most of the workouts. Yeah. Was it, me was and it, uh, you know, it's it always was. me and you, Mike, because Luke and Danny are freakishly fast and they're shorter and me and Mike move much more similarly. So it's for synchro stuff. It just kind of made sense. So a lot of times Mike and I were paired. Yeah, yeah so, the, the only workout we didn't pair at, at semis was like snatches. a ski or dumbbell snatch one. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Lindsay, how, when you when you first met Pool Boy, um, how like what was your like first, you know, thoughts of him and like say like you know like what what was going through your mind when you first saw him? You're like, okay, this is this could be our this could this could be the guy. Oh, it was no could. That was like, that was our option. That, that was it. So, but honestly, I mean, I am sure you kind of know Mike's personality at this point. It's very similar to my own. So we, I'm pretty sure we just like gave each other huge hugs when we met each other as if we'd known each other for a while. So it was all very easy, weirdly, weirdly easy. <laughs> so, so um, how did you guys like manage to figure out like, okay, during this workout, like, you know, pool boy will like, you know, link up with you and then, you know, then you'll have like somebody else linking up with you. Like how, how did that, how did that like kind of management work? Mike, do you want to jump on that? Do you want me to do it? Apparently me. Cause he's gone. Yeah. You. <laughs> 
Oh, but I'm, I'm, I, it was weird. I can still see you guys. Oh, really? No, you're back. Am I there? You're here. Yeah, yeah, you're here. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it just depended on the yeah, workout. Lizzie, you can, you you know can ask. I mean? Yeah, it just kind of depended on the workout. Like, I remember during, trying to remember some of the workouts, during qualifiers, there was one that we did very well on that was uh, dumbbell thrusters that were synchro and shuttle runs. And it like one like that, it just makes sense. Like Danny and Luke are shorter and they're speedy as hell. So it wouldn't have made any sense to split them up and then be stuck on my pace with Luke and then stuck on Mike's pace for Danny. It just made more sense to pair them together. They crush it. Me and Mike just push ourselves and do what we can with each other. So, but then with the dumbbell snatch one that he was talking about, um, I believe the reason for that was one pairing did more reps at a lighter weight and one pair did less reps at a heavier weight on the snatches and i believe mike wanted geez i don't remember more reps and lighter and i wanted heavier and less reps i believe so that's why we did that swap pairing so i paired with luke and he paired with danny okay okay now i um during the semifinals i mean you guys were i was watching you guys like specifically during the whole semifinals so um i believe it was the end of the work end of, end of one of the work i think it was the last workout in semifinals so i i look i linked up uh pool boys uh instagram so i saw this and i'm like what oh, what happened what, what happened to this oh the last workout we were doing so well too we were like top 20 and uh yeah i concussed myself on that workout <laughs> literally literally concussed myself i was lit i i'm sure mike can confirm this i was falling over the worm trying to jump over it for burpees i was so disoriented but they also for handstand push-ups it, it was just like a hard ass floor the wheelchair? Like, no no it's no me no, no. Carrying me off the, the last workout I know you guys went on team. You guys are on, on two different teams this year. So was there any thought of, of coming back on to, you know, CrossFit 1977's team at all? Or if there was any, we, we had some discussions and um, if we were to bring the crew back, it would, it would be on the West because the West sucks. <laughs> and the pattern, I'm just being, I'm just being honest. If, if you're not in the top, like, I want to say individually, if you're not part of the top, like 20, maybe 25 individuals, like you're not going to make it on the East. Um, if you're not part of the top 10 teams here out on the West, you're, you wouldn't have a chance on the East. And wh why do you think, why do you think that? Cause originally like uh, uh, CrossFit early, yeah, we CrossFit earlier on, um, was around it was actually kind of like the opposite like the west was kind of like the strong one you know that's, for a, that's a very good point there was just with just time there's just a power shift you know it's just like in any sport like if you look at the nfl um there's always like certain divisions where the power for like you know years and years it's always been like the niners or the the patriots that are just dominating and like certain divisions will be like the dominating divisions but just the power just eventually shifts over time and I think that's just how it is with with CrossFit. And, you know, in the past, yeah, the the West has always kind of been more the thought of the uh, has the, had has been always thought of as like the tougher area with the bigger athletes. But a lot of those athletes are now either in the grandpa division or retired. And <laughs> if you look at the East, that, that's where all the powerhouses are. You got Proven, Training Think Tank, Mayhem even HWPO, all the big powerhouse camps are out on the East. Like mm -hmm. besides Invictus and um, Puppy Dogs, Dog. yeah. Puppy Dog Athletics, there's nothing like, that's it. Yeah. I mean, and, yeah. And you also have like, obviously Misfit. And then you have like Brute, which is down in Florida. So, exactly. There's two, so yeah, two there's, brothers that I missed. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, it's, it's large. So yeah, obviously I would, Think you guys would go to the west and a lot of people are staying in the west too because they're like i don't want to go to the east what's the point you know i may have a shot to go to the crossfit games if i stay over on the west compared to moving back to the east well someone was texting me about how how like lindsay you probably know where does kelsey keel live currently mm. i know she Ohio? doesn't live in boston anymore but doesn't, no, she, still, doesn't she still live in, in the philly east? is she in philly still something like that but she's yeah. competing out of the west well and her someone, someone brought it to my attention that she's been just like constantly on her stories like airplanes like just going back and forth well i think i think her boyfriend 
pitches for the San Francisco Giants. And I think he's in like a far I think he's in a farm league, so that's why she's staying there, I guess. But is she I, I don't using know. is she using that as like a loophole in the in the system to just stay I don't with think him? there's a loophole though. Does it say that for East and West, or can you just have to do the workouts of the affiliate like teams or no? I didn't look into it because I wasn't planning on anything indie, but I had always thought it was your resident of uh, of address because that's like why the issues of Ellie Turner came up, right? Why like why Ellie Turner yeah. couldn't get an exemption. And she yeah, had to go back sure. to Australia. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's, I don't I know. I mean, I, because I'm not so often I can't keep up. So, yeah, I, I mean, I know she was in, I know she was in Philly for a while too. So, and then I don't know, I mean, where she's at or where she's going back and forth. But I mean, that's definitely interested in something to look into. So, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. So, but, um, so Lindsay, um, when you were forming up the team, um, obviously pool boy wasn't going to be there and you were constantly, you were considering moving over to the West. So what kind of made you stay in the East and, and pick up the guys that you picked up for? Um, your team? I, don't know, I don't know if it was more so moving, but I was looking into the means of or, like, the team, like me and Dick, I, don't, I don't know if we seriously discussed it, but we're like, it'd be cool if every, but it's every week you got to fly out to California and it's not like just over the border West. It's like all the way West. So, it, you know, it's a long flight too. And, um, we all have a lot of stuff going on back home. Danny's getting married this year. You know, I had some work transitions and Luke is going to the fire Academy. So it just, it just didn't, wouldn't make sense. Yeah. yeah I was so. the ding, I was the ding dong who got fired. So it was a lot easier for me to do it. You had to come here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ding dong. I can't. Yeah. So, so, how, so how's your team and like, um, who was like, you know, do each one of them have like a certain specialty that's like kind of meshes in with your team? For like the one I was on this year? Yes, the one that you're on yeah. this year. So the one for this year, I've always uh, been, I've always kind of gone up and up and back and forth with Ocean State. They're like a, ye a year, geez. They're like an hour from me. Um, and I know a lot of the people there. And Christine Middleton and I have always kind of been in contact. Her and I were actually on a team. The one shot I ever had to go to the games was when I was on a team with her during covid and we were ranked very high. I had Ray Fleeser and um, my husband on my team. And we were ranked really high. We got all the way up to Canada for the Atlas Games. And that's when COVID hit. And we went to the briefing and they sent us all home. And I was like, if oh, I had one were, shot. If I had one shot. the Atlas Games? Yeah, yeah. 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 Kelly Kelly uh, Clark was on a team there too um, with Elijah Muhammad. No, wasn't yeah. it? Atlas? I think uh, it was the Atlas Games with Elijah Muhammad. They were stacked too. Yeah, we were like we were ranked second. So there, there was one team ranked above us, so it could have very well been them. Yeah, you guys literally showed up at the stadium, and they were like, "Sorry, we got to close <laughs> yep. this down. Like, Go Bye. home. See you Bye. later." I was like, "That was my one chance." <laughs> I think Caroline Connors and Austin Spencer, well, Caroline Spencer and, and Austin Spencer were up there too. And they like almost didn't make it through the border because that's when like, they were like a couple hours away from the Canadian border, just like shutting down and like yeah. not letting anybody go through. Weird time, man. We were like in our Airbnb. We're like, well, do we just stay for the weekend and go out in Canada or do we go home? And we stayed, but we only stayed like one more night and we're like, okay, let's go home. <laughs> Let's just go home. <laughs> yeah, you might yeah. have been stuck there if you didn't go. If you didn't yeah, go yeah. So we went. We went home. But um, yeah. So my team this year. So I've always kind of been in contact with Christine, um, and her and I work with Element as well. So we've always had like ties. And um, I think I shot her a message just because I didn't know what the heck my season was gonna be, and this was, um, again, my health was all over the place too. So I just kind of didn't know, but just seeing where her and her gym were at because I knew Danny wanted to go indie. Mike obviously is in California and Luke was retired for the season. So I just, you know, was in contact with her and it just kind of happened that they had two teams. Obviously she was on her team. That's like way up there in like fourth in the world right now. Um, it was fun watching them throw down, but um, yeah, they had it. They wanted to put another team together and um, it was a lot of fun. Amy Morton would have been on our team and she's a stud and a half. She, uh, she, I think, was the piece that we were kind of missing on our team, and and Nate'll say this as well, where she is very, very organized. She'll tell us what to do. She'll, she's very like assertive, which we need. You need like that one person, and I don't really think that we had that together. It was all like, oh, what should we do? Who wants to lead? Who wants to call? I think Mike actually probably did the best job at that. Um, but it was cool to have that and that experience on a team. So it's really a bummer that we didn't end up making it. Um. And we did have um, uh, a guy, his name is Jordan. He is a phenomenal, like phenomenal with gymnastics, the ring muscle-ups. His handstand walking is probably the best I've ever seen in my 
my life. It's like crazy. It's speed walking upside down. Um, and Sam, it's actually, he's never competed at semis and we really wanted to get him there. Um, he's newer to the sport and pretty well-rounded. It's just, just didn't happen for us this year. So yeah, all good. All good. But, uh, but pool boy, I, I know you, you formed a team too, as well. How, how did that, uh, how did that go? And who was on your team? I did. I didn't. I, uh, yeah. I think you were, I think you went on team. No, not this year. No. Oh, I thought I thought you were training with a worm with somebody. I thought I saw that on your Instagram. It was us. Old throwback. Oh, geez. Might have, yeah, I might have. Been oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, right. no, it was solo, solo. We had, I mean, we have two capable females. Like I said, one of them was only five spots out of going indie. Um, they were just really, really good workouts for her. We just didn't have another guy. We didn't have another guy. That was the problem. Yeah. And how hard, obviously it was pretty hard for you to find somebody to stay at the affiliate and train with you guys. Yeah. I, I reached out to my friend Keanu Redongo, um, and to see if he would be interested, but I, I know he had always been trying to go indie. Um, so I don't, yeah, I think he was just like half in half out. Um, but yeah, no, couldn't, couldn't find anyone. I've been trying for a while to convince, uh my friend rafa to go team because i'm like man dude that's it's gonna be your best shot at the games if we can listen just... you get him on a team i will fly my ass out there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, dude, that dude's an animal man he, i'll he make it happen it. he kills it yeah we did the uh i just saw him over the weekend we did work out three together because if there was any uh workout that i would push him in um at all it, it was that one and yeah it was it was fun going head to head with him in, in that one and Man, I, 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 dude, he's on, he's on the cusp. He's on the cusp. I think if the workouts are, are good enough for if they, if they favor him and at semis, he's got such a good chance to go to the games. But I also don't know how many they're taking this year from each each spot. They haven't they haven't announced that yet. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. So what did you guys think about the quarterfinals workouts? Individually or team? Well, both. So obviously, Lindsay can go team, and you can go individual. What do you want to start? Uh, Lindsay, you can go first. Ladies first. Uh, okay. So I, I did not love them personally, both for biased reasons and unbiased reasons. So for biased reasons. So I came in, I came into the season, A, just getting cleared from a concussion and B, also got diagnosed with a herniated disc in week two of the open. Jeez. And so of course, like it was the open was dumbbell snatches and deadlifts. And I'm like, you know what? The positive of this is that means for teams for quarterfinals, we're done with those movements. And we were not done with those <laughs> movements. We got them again. Um, so I thought it was very repetitive in that sense. Yes. The load's heavier. It's a different, you know, somewhere different stimuli and I, all that kind of stuff. But I would have liked to see more variety and more of a separator with the team workouts, especially with there only being four different scores this year instead of five. So mm -hmm. I wasn't super impressed. Um, I wish they were different, but again, also biased because we missed it by like 14 spots for semi. So I'm also, you know, a little butthurt in that sense. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. So, so pool, but what did you think about the individual uh, quarterfinals? Um, I mean, like, so, so like even, even for team, um, just to kind of go back on team real quick, I, I, it was very interesting, um, to hear everyone's opinions on them. And even like my opinion, I thought, I thought it was a little lazy. I thought a little lazy programming, um, for the teams, but to, in CrossFit's defense, I can kind of see like how it could be challenging to be somewhat creative given like the circumstances of like having to think about logistics of four athletes being in a um, camera frame with the proper movement standards being held with the proper equipment being able to shoved in a, a, a video camera. I really liked the first workout for teams. I thought that was a really cool program to work out. Oh, that was a great one. I, I yeah. will agree with that. That was a really yeah. cool program, to work yeah. out. but everything else seemed a little, just kind of lazy. Yeah. Agreed. Bit. Yeah. Um, even, even our workouts last year, looking back at them, I thought they were just okay. They were okay. Yeah. But yeah. again, like to cross its defense, like it is, it is a bit of a challenge to try to program sophisticated enough workouts for teams with all those logistics, keeping in mind, like floor space for athletes, equipment access, all that stuff. Sure. Now to shift over to the individuals, it was really funny to kind of hear everyone's groping and bitching, like how they didn't like the team stuff and how they were really scared um, that that would shift over to the individuals, especially with like Dave Castro announcing in his week in review that 
gyms would be able to run run them in class uh, yep. settings and everything. So everyone was like, oh, no, we're going to get another soft version of the Open going into quarterfinals. And then the workouts get released and everyone's just like kind of takes a step back and gives like CrossFit a, a round of applause. I personally thought they were great programmed workouts. I, I, I want to say it's probably one of the best programmed yeah. quarterfinal workouts, especially with the fact that I believe they're they're getting the right in, individuals to two semis. And yeah, you could run these classes or in, run these workouts in your affiliate with the exception of workout three. Uh, workout Agreed. three would be no really way. hard to run, but yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. Like have one workout where it's just like, dude, you got to fucking do this on your own time. Yeah, I agree um, with that. So overall, I thought they were great, great workouts. Which yeah. one was your favorite? Oh, workout three, hands down. Yeah. Yeah, the, the hand stamp. But that was my best one. Like look at my scores. I got like 150th, 200th, and then 49th or something like that in that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, didn't, I, I actually got into quarterfinals, but I didn't do it though. So, oh, unbelievable! I know, unbelievable. I know. I did. You guys want... watch any of the Taylor Self versus the World stuff? I, I did. I saw. Oh, I, God, I, it was so great. I saw the um, was it workout four with the dumbbell with not the dumbbell snatches with the snap uh, clean and jerks? Yeah, is that workout four? Yeah, yeah. So I saw, I saw that one. That was good. And then I saw Taylor Self like eat it implode on the fl- implode on too. the floor. Yeah, on three when he like just like fell backwards on the floor. Oh man, dude! Big big shout out to those guys. Like the fact that they had the balls to be like, "Fuck it, we're doing this live. You motherfuckers are gonna see our scores, and we don't yeah. give a fuck." Yeah, just, yeah. It, it was that was awesome. Yeah. Well, so I had a question from the last group that uh, last podcast I did. So, do you think CrossFit? So, do you think CrossFit needs to do a little bit more for quarterfinals to make it more exciting for people that are in quarterfinals, like towards like the bottom part of quarterfinals, to kind of do it and like you know kind of like almost like do like an open announcement but for quarterfinals what did they say well they said no so they said they you're they're better off have like having like savannah or like some other group to to do it themselves because it's it's almost like picking favorites when it comes to crossfit if they say like okay well, let's get like daniel brandon and like somebody like in somebody else like you know and they're like high up there, so they just gotta, you know. Wait, so what was the question again? Like, you you want CrossFit to do like a, a live almost open? like an open announcement for like quarterfinals, or should they do it? How would they do that? I don't. Well, maybe like one day, like one one of the workouts or like one week, and they just have like you know a couple group, like two groups of people to do one workout, would, uh, and then they do another workout. That would require the athlete to like again, like have the balls to be able to put their score out there. True, that's a big ask. But, not yeah. even not even the balls, I would say, but also like at that stage, you really need to do your best. And so to just kind of do the workout on the spot when it's announced, whereas the open, it doesn't matter as much. But you kind of want more prep time to see all the workouts to coordinate what you're going to do when get a game plan, not just like kind of hit it on the spot. Unless you're like obviously like someone like Tia who will smash no matter what. But you know what I mean? Yeah, so, logistically, that wouldn't work because Lindsay's right. Like yeah. like even like Taylor and, and, and then they did work out four first. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's like they you gotta you gotta be smart about the workouts you choose to do and stuff like that. But no, no, yeah. I'm in the boat where like, I, like, dude, I don't give a fuck about the bottom twenty five percent, dude. If you if, if the workout starts with a fucking three hundred pound clean and jerk, like, pff, tough luck. I got it. Yeah, I got Agreed it. With- yeah, yeah. <laughs> tough luck. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, I I when they did had the announcement saying that they were it was gonna be for like people that aren't in the quarterfinals and it's enough like they could do it in class i was like shit this is not gonna be good and then i saw like the wall ball like burpee box overs and i'm like i could i could literally see like a boatload of people not even making it past that first round if that yeah i mean a lot of people kind of got stuck in that in that mid second round i would say the majority of them I love sick workouts like that. I love grindy, gross workouts that no one wants to do. I'm like, I'm good. I like that. <laughs> that workout left me the most sore for sure. Yeah, same. Yeah. I, You know what? Mike saved me actually because I was all prepared to do workout two before the gymnastics one and the clean and jerk one. And I'm like, nah, I'm like, this won't leave me sore. Like, I got this all day. I do this kind of stuff all the time. And I was talking to him about it. I'm like, nah, I'm doing, I'm doing the wall ball one today. He's like, do the gymnastics one. I'm like, nah, I'm doing wall balls. And then I got, 
I got to Ocean State and there are a lot of them actually were doing the gymnastics one. I'm sitting there. I'm like, Mike said, do gymnastics. I'm like, fine, I'll do the gymnastics one also today. And then, so I did the wall ball one. And afterwards I'm like, thank God, Mike. <laughs> oh, dude, I knew so that bad. was like, <laughs> wall balls fuck me up. Like I like just the, they don't uh, usually for me, they don't usually, but I don't also push it that hard. So. Yeah, they always <laughs> fuck me. Like any, if I ever do a wall ball workout that has like a hundred or more, in them yeah they wreck me they wreck me so when i saw that this one was 150 i was like fuck i'm gonna push this one as as late as i can because it'll it would destroy me and it yeah. did my quads my quads are still a little sore same and i did 120 wall balls today like a dipshit i was like yeah. that was dumb like I'm not, yeah. I'm not young anymore, man. My body doesn't recover. It doesn't bounce back. As oh, it. don't give me that shit. Don't I'm give me too, that I'm shit. I'm being honest, man. I'm being honest. I'm fucking almost 34 now, and and like I literally limp out of bed now for my first like 10 steps. I'm like, ugh, it's awful. <laughs> yeah, wobbles always jack me up too, and I'm like so like I literally can like throw the ball a couple inches and I'm already hitting the target. So, and, but the only thing is like, I know a lot of guys when they do wall balls, they throw like they throw the hands up to kind of relax. Yeah. I, I try to do that and I can't, I don't have enough time. I can't do that either. It, yeah. it messes up my tempo. I know like Fulkowski is a big advocate of that method. I, I can't do that. Yeah. I've seen, I saw Ben Smith do it one time and I'm like, Oh, let me, let me try it. And I literally had the ball just uh, kiss me right in the face, yeah. and I'm like, "Yeah, I can't do this." I think I think their like their, their penises are a lot bigger too, so I think that ha that has to play a role in it somehow. <laughs> has well, to. well, they don't call me tripod for nothing. <laughs> so. Stop it. <You> anyway, <laughs> you animals, Jesus Christ, is, that, is it as thick as your mic stand? Is that is that what you're it might to tell? My, it might be it might be. Well, I mean, I'm I'm six six. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> my computer's about to die so i'm just trying to find your link in my email <laughs> my oh you're email. you're good you're good so <laughs> so obviously like you know um you know the season's over for both of all three of us pretty much oh, so i'm just gonna sit here and cry now thank Thanks you for the it, thank you yeah, sorry thank you so sorry much. <laughs> so so what what are your expectations for going into next season so like are you looking to like work on anything at all or just like is there some like certain skill you want to like target to attack for this yeah, year I just, I, I just gotta get fitter man i just gotta keep getting fitter like i mean i don't really have any i don't want to say i don't have any gaping weaknesses because i do but if it comes down to like i just gotta get stronger and i just gotta get my metabolic conditioning up like i can do the movements i can do everything um there's not ever a movement or a skill that i see where i'm like i can't do that yeah um it's just a matter of just i just have to get fitter mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably yeah. the same for Lindsay. Yeah, I feel very similarly. Um, my strength could use a little bit of work. Um, I do she can get a, a new back, too, probably. Yeah, a new back would be great. new head would be great. And, yeah, uh, yeah a little more condition, a little bit more strength. But um, I don't know if I have a season next year yet. We'll we'll see. She could also <laughs> learn how to fucking squat clean. Yeah, without peeing. Yeah, that'd yeah. be good. Otherwise, yeah. you're gonna end up, otherwise, otherwise, knock on wood, you're going to need a new knee, girl. Those starfish. I know, man. I know. It's fine. You're gonna Miranda old. There's way. honestly, honestly, Mike made a really funny. We have a funny video of Mike mimicking my my power <laughs> <I forgot laughs> It's So that. funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a good time. So, mm -hmm. so Lindsay, are you looking to do any like masters competitions at all, or? I call me old man. Uh, yeah, I'm so, four. Listen, I'm 44. So, uh, I mean, Masters Fitness Collective, I will never do again. Sorry, not sorry. And um, didn't didn't they fuck up again this year? Like they couldn't. Pay I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. I don't. Yeah, I'm done with that. So, um, what other Masters comps are there really? I'm not Masters yet. I'm the same age as Mike. So, um, I might. It depends on a few factors. Um, I might do that Wadapalooza, but there's no. Did you know there's no qualifier for that in Cali? I heard rumors. I mean, they never actually they DM me. I DM them. And I was like, yo, what's up with this? Cause it's, it's, and October. it's just first come first serve. Yeah. First come first serve. No elite division, just RX and scaled and open division. Elite, I, so elite is invite only. I don't know if there is an elite. Uh, there's oh, yeah. gonna be. They got to get, they have, have to, they have to be. They That's have what to I would assume. So I yeah, would assume, weird. I would assume it's invite only for elite. Yeah. That's, um, silly. Yeah, that's whack. I mean, yeah. I might, I, I might not even be able to go anymore because um i guess the girlfriend's got a wedding a friend a friend who's having who's getting married the same day so we might have to have to just do that um which i'm okay with i guess because you know it's not like socal's going anywhere yeah i feel you i'm doing a comp uh in june 
oh my god, what is it? Uh, Invictus Boston's comp? Probably? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That one. Yeah. I'm Wasn't that, that a black only comp? Don't you have to have certain colored skin to go to that? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I'm being serious. Like, I could have swore that they owned that they only like the first year or two that it was only for like blacks. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking Dude, about. Dude, I'm not even exaggerating. I could have swore. I got to look at that. That's interesting. Hey, you, 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 you're something. You well, know? this was during like this was during all the like George Floyd stuff. I I have no idea. Honestly, I just went through my depressive phase in like a two day span when I knew my season was over for like the 80th time. because I thought my season was done 50 times and uh i just dm them i'm like yo do you have any spots i was like i need a comp to look forward to they're like yeah you got it i'm like thanks nice. <laughs> thanks so much <laughs> appreciate you <laughs> yeah no i really didn't i thought so i wasn't cleared until two days before the open started so i was like all right fuck it let's see what happens and then it was all hinging so i was like okay I'm, i literally did a 300 meter row for workout two i did a 300 meter row and i submitted my time because i couldn't pick a bar off the ground and um after we lost team quarters we didn't we didn't pass on i'm like okay now my season's over again and then i got the indie invite i'm like how am i top 25 percent? i didn't do a workout so i thought my season was over like 20 different times this year <laughs> yeah that's oh, yeah. wild that's don't crazy. do a workout and you still make quarterfinals. I have a new I have a new tactic now. I'm just gonna pick my least favorite and then just not do it and submit just a one rep score. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I th that that actually happened, I think, one in one of the opens. I uh who was it? Um uh uh what's her name? She won she won the open once. She won the the games once, and her 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 husband's like the bro uh Camille. Yeah, Camille. So, I, think, Blanc, yeah. Yannick, so I, I think I there was one time she went team with um with a, I think it was uh Cody Mooney. Um oh what's this? I'm having a brain fart. It was like um Jess uh, Jess Griffith Griffiths and like I think who else was it? Ben Smith's brother, um oh, Alex Smith. Alex? So it was, it was so those four together and, and Camille only did like one rep during one of the open workouts slay nice and she made it <laughs> yeah and she placed in that in that team placed second in the in the uh at the games that year i remember oh. i remember she cried at the games when her rower wouldn't turn on you remember that yep i remember that i saw that yep yeah i was back in like 2011 that was yeah that was super early i wasn't even in crossfit yet so, so what ha what happened Did, like the judge not even like turn it on or no Did i just think it was dead? a faulty rower i just think it was a faulty rower oh that sucks yeah yep. That sucks. But um, I had a question for both of you guys, too, as well. So um, there's been a lot of girls on the elite division that are quitting. Almost quitting, not like just like walking away. Yeah. Why are women mentally weak, Lindsay? Yeah. Why? Why, well, why are you guys so That's why I have Lindsay. So, so, like, so emotional and fragile. Why Why did ba Bailey Rail like <laughs> left this year? Well, left like a week, a couple days ago. And then Katrin left because I granted because dude, it was like back injury from what she no, was saying. No, emotional, fragile. She's fragile. And emotional. then like, and then obviously um, a couple of the girls like Mal O'Brien, Emma Carey. They're like, younger though. They're younger. Yeah. Though. So, I mean, that, that, that it happens. Well, Emma, Emma was called by the Lord. Remember that she was called by the Lord. That was her. Yep. That was her reason. Yep. So. What I will say is like you, Nate and I actually discussed this and with um, Bailey um, and what we kind of respect is like a lot of us, especially when we dedicate so much of our lives and time to the sport, it's, it's kind of nice to see if there's something you're really, really passionate about that, you know, we can pursue other routes as well. And it's just cross. It's not our sole identity. I think that's not a bad thing, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you think she's pregnant? You, oh, oh, who, who, Bailey? yeah. Oh, shit. It's an interesting thought. Well, she was called by the Lord, too, wasn't she? I, I don't know. Um, I didn't I didn't read her. her. Uh, yeah, she, I guess she she has some like foundation or organization that she's. Yeah, in. well, that's the and thing. She, she has like her new another like and she just episode. randomly decided right in the middle of the season that she wanted to do it. So I kind of thought that was a little sus, but maybe she is pregnant. I think that I think that. I, I think there's a little something else. There has to be something else. But I, I also want to make it clear, like someone like like Mal, like I don't give a fuck. Like if if she doesn't want to do CrossFit anymore and she wants to go be like a teenager and yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, ab like, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Fucking do it. That's awesome. 
and she's killing it in, in Hawaii. Like her her videos of yeah, like her, honestly raining it over over in Hawaii are like getting <laughs> sick views and just living the best life ever. And I'm like, shit, like do your do, go do it. Yeah. yeah. But I also I also see the other side of it where like I get it if people are upset that like these athletes are dropping out because at the end of the day, like they want to see them compete and like they want to see them go out there. And so like the selfish part of being a fan of the sport is you want to see the best athletes out there. So if they're dropping out and, you know, people in the comments are like getting upset about it, like I, I understand that too. Yeah. I, I mean, you could also consider of like uh, parents and they have their kids watching these athletes that are like killing it. And they say, Hey, you know, this, you know, you could be like this too as well. And then all of a sudden they drop out the next year after or, or whatever and have like a mental breakdown or I, I'm not saying anybody had a mental breakdown, but I'm just saying like any something happened and they're not, they're not training or they're not going to like just to, to the open, you know, I kind of looks bad to too as well. That, like at least Haley and Mal had mental breakdowns, but at least yeah. Haley's back. Haley's back now. Yeah, I mean, be, being a teenager and being on social media, yeah, yeah, and that that's that's a lot. And even yeah. like people, even like people like calling them out all the time too. It's just like, uh, could you, yeah, li like Lindsay? That. Could you? Yeah. Could you imagine how old is Mal? What is she like? 19? 18? 19, I think nineteen now. When did she sign? When did she, when did she sign her deal with Noble? Do you know? Let's just say she was like seventeen when she signed that deal. Lindsay, could you imagine as a seventeen-year-old? No, I know. Nope. Nope. I, someone I heard a rumor of what she was offered by Noble, and it was fucking some wild amount of money. Like, could you imagine Lindsay being seventeen years old signing a deal for like something close to a million dollars? No, no. But also, here's also where I chime in is that also when I was at that age, I don't know if it's just the female in our brains or whatever, but it's such a hard time of life also mentally and about yourself that like that's just so that's so much to take on and never mind like the social media aspect of everything so i don't know i don't i don't judge anything i guess i mean well, girls, yeah, it, girls mature yeah. faster than guys including their bodies yeah yeah which is part of the reason why yeah. we don't see any uh hiller hiller had to ass slap me around about it when we were on the podcast on savant's podcast together um, it's part of the reason why you see uh, more females, fifteen or not fifteen, but 16, sixteen, seventeen, oh, making sorry. me. Sorry, sorry, oh, good. sorry. Yeah, good. yeah that, that's okay. why you see like sixteen, seventeen-year-old females making it into the open division at the games, and you don't see that for the men because yeah, you know the women just develop faster. Yeah. Yeah, I I, there, there, I know there's a kid that won the games this year. He's going uh, individual now. Um, Team kid, Ty Jenkins. Yeah, Ty Jenkins. Yeah, and I've I've heard about him a couple of years ago too. And so yeah, your girl uh, Jessica Griffith um, coaches him. Yeah. So do you do you think he's gonna like? Obviously, he's young. He probably needs to like. Do I do think he's gonna make it this year? No. Yeah. No. Do you do you think it's because like he, he needs to hit lift more or what? what do you, why do you think that? I just, it's just the like I, the, the men are just far too competitive. Like not not to take too much away from the women, but it's the men's field is just it's 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 more competitive than than the females. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously the the females now are like there's like 12, 12 people from the games of last year aren't even going to be there. Yeah, that too. Not I even going to send them. I think fourteen of them dropped out. Yeah. So, I mean, at least the good thing is there's some people that are on the bubble or can get at least get into semifinals and maybe have a shot. Yeah, yeah especially with the cuts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is he so. is Ty in the West or is he in the East? I, I don't know. Because if he's in the East, then yeah, fucking no, he ain't making it. Yeah. He might have moved to Iowa. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I feel like a lot of the females are like, that are um very competitive in the sport at least in the ones that have been not necessarily all the ones that have been dropping out but they're kind of around our age you kind of get to that point you get married you start thinking about kids especially as a female that that's where i'm at next you know that's why i might not have a season next year you know what i mean so i feel like that kind of happens naturally especially for females once we get a little bit older you kind of have to take those breaks you know so yeah i mean i could i could see that i mean because you know crossfit's not the end all be all so yeah you you want to have a life and do yeah. stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I hear you. So, um, so 
we're getting close to the end. And so um, we probably have like another 10 more minutes because Pool Boy <laughs> caused the 10 minutes. So sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, so what what do you expect for the semifinals as well as you know being at a new venue for the games? Oh, I'm so excited, especially for like I really want to try to go down um for Rafa specifically and also selfishly because it's back at Carson mm -hmm. at the tennis stadium. Like, oh god, that's gonna be so awesome. Yeah, that that whole that whole atmosphere. I mean, even like obviously I've never been there, but just like the through like the you know the movies and all that stuff, the documentaries. I've been there twice, dude. It's wild. Yeah, the, I can imagine the amount of energy is just amplified because it's just it's it's such a small intimate setting, and it's just you're right on top of the athletes. Um, it's it's going to be so fun. If I was an athlete in the East, I would I would be really jealous, really jealous. Yeah, because there's nothing in Knoxville. Oh, I would. Ugh. First of all, Knox, Orlando was way better. And you know, again, with the communication and last minute changes, at least tell the athletes before you tell them they make it and book all their stuff that it's a two day competition and not three days. Like Ocean State, oh, all bought all their flights, the hotels, everything. They're like, oh, by the way, it's two days. I'm like, now I'm not as upset that I didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. It's only two days. Yeah, I don't like that. Again, yeah, so last minute changes, no communication. That stuff drives me wild. That's wonder why, like, why. Yeah. Because they're having less athletes. I understood last year why we had three days instead of four because there was like 60 fucking athletes there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like yeah. Um, but it's less this year. So I, I don't understand why. Because it's less days that they have to rent out the venue and pay people. Bingo. <laughs> that, that's it. That's Shoot. it. I understand business. Here's my thing. I own a business. I understand business is business and you have to keep it alive, but also you have to think of your people as well in those decisions. And I feel like they don't always do that. That bugs me. This is why we need more gyms to affiliate. People, people bitch and moan about financials that CrossFit's don't have yet. They don't, they don't pay. They don't, they don't do their part and sign up and, and affiliate or support a gym that's affiliated yeah. or, sign up for the open how many ding dongs do you know that are like why am i gonna pay 20 bucks to just to be on the leaderboard right, i'm gonna do yeah. the workouts anyway well, it's because it's it, you're fucking supporting something that you want to see that you want to see grow you know yep and i want this i want this to grow so because we all want platforms here and it's like <laughs> dude it's fucking 20 bucks man like holy shit they pro people probably spend that more on coffee at Starbucks, even though yeah, their coffee is absolute the, ass. Or the hooker on the street, you know? True. Yes. Jeez Louise, you know? <laughs> God. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're still but, the same Mike. Still the same true. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just ridiculous. I hate that excuse. Yeah. So do you think CrossFit next year, for, if they do the Open, if you think they're going to do the top – Top twenty five again because dude, I don't know. Did you? I heard you, they you, might use the open scores. God, there's no way. No, I don't way think so either. Do I don't think there's so either. No way. How would they that, fucking? If that's um, the case, I'm not going to do a workout again. <laughs> or just put in a BS score. Yeah. Well, speaking of, not that I'm saying BS score at all. At all. Did you see? I can't believe uh, Andrea had her baby and did the open. That's wild to me. Yes. That's wild. And she, she she play six in her division. Is she, is she in the masters division or? She's going to semis. It's she a wild like concept. Or something like it that. gives me yeah. hope. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, shit. Uh, well, how, did how you? Far, how far did, did she have her baby? Uh, I heard it was like a month ago. No. No, there's no way a month. Dude, ago. that but... I heard four to six weeks ago is what I read. So did you During have you, open is did, you yeah. did you see her did you see her videos of like lifting weights? She was like cleaning yeah, people squat were like cleaning all some over the comments and shit. Yeah, she's yeah, gonna blow her vagina open. Yeah, and I was like, I was even watching, I was like, damn, that's a lot of weight. A lot of weight. Yeah, she must have been taking peptides or something. I that baby was probably gonna be jacked when, she, when they get out. So well, they're they're already out now, but they're probably yeah. jacked. Baby's yeah. Here. Yeah. But I mean to, to to go on top of your um your question about the open next year. I, I, I mean, I don't know how, if you guys follow Dave's weekend reviews, but there was one where he stated that they're going to make changes to the open to make yeah. it relevant again, whatever that means. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, what does that mean? Are they going to use? Not, God, I really hope that's not the reason because it's because they proved this year that like you could, 
you could put a, a number one workout in the world and not have to have a, a video to verify it yeah. with that one chick. So I really hope that's not here's, what they here's do. Here's the thing. I'm like, I'm like, all these people argue about wanting it to be a legitimate sport, but just be freaking consistent and stuff. Even, you know what's driving me nuts right now is that I know a lot of people, Mike, you posted on your story and I actually did this and I took it out and I changed it. I put my reps of clean and jerks at the final bar and I changed it. Oh, did it. you see my story? Yeah, yeah, but I, I saw your story and then I still did it. I still did it and I, I took don't. it out and I fixed it. I took it out and I fixed it. Regardless, be responsible of your own entries if you put it in wrong and then you're going to bitch to CrossFit and ask them to change it. It's like last year when they didn't let someone compete because they didn't put their score in. On yeah, Anna could rear. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. They're, but they're changing the scores. They're they're going back right yeah. now. I'm watching my score drop because they're going back and changing people's scores. Yeah, and they like, allowed you need that. Um, to stay consistent, though. Be they allowed that female to, to, to yeah, read her score. I think, I think it's Gracie Walton or something like that. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. it's her, yeah. Oh no, I know. Hiller's, like, there's Hiller's a handful. on your side, Lindsay. Hiller's on there's, your side. There's more than just one. I know of a handful. I'm personally watching it, and I'm not saying to anything about who is getting their their score changed. You know, mm -hmm. I'm good for you because it's going to help you out. But also, that's why the sport doesn't go anywhere. You know yeah, what I mean? It's hard. It's hard to keep it consistent. And then plus, yeah. you got you got people on both sides bitching like about each. Um, about each thing. Like I had, like, I posted that thing about Luis Oscar Moore on my video. Mm. And I, had a, I had a friend kind of like say like, it, it shouldn't matter. He's still, he's still showing, you know, the intensity of the movement. Oh, me nuts. Clearly, I'm like, like, Brooke, like Brooke Wells when she was doing yeah, the handstand pushups. Yeah. She's showing the capacity, all that shit. Yeah. But I mean, it, just, it is interesting because when you think about it, the quarterfinal is, is the only stage where CrossFit has, screen by screen access to see like what a rep is right they don't have that in real time at semis so it's just i don't know it's it's it's, it's interesting how the um i don't think it'll ever be a professionalized sport for, for yeah just because of how the structure of it all works yeah. you know an yeah. online competition and all that shit and i'm okay with that you know i'm, I'm okay with it never being a quote professional sport i kind of yeah. like how it is i just think people need to understand that a little bit more they need to be a little bit more lenient towards crossfit because there's a reason why crossfit doesn't do a lot of these things that most people ask like why are they aren't doing like there's a reason why crossfit doesn't do things like savon does with the taylor versus the world or any of these mm. other things because it's like if savon fucks up on it like that's him you know, no, well, yeah. even that, but like, no one gives a shit. No one cares yeah. because no one looks at Savon as a professional, like, platform or podcast. CrossFit does something like that and they fuck up. Oh my God, the Reddit threads, the, yeah. the videos, this, that, the other. So it's just like, no, and not I'm not sitting. I'm not sitting here shitting on CrossFit either. I like, very much respect what they do for the most part. It's just the consistency thing. Just and the consistency and last minute changes. That's the that's the two things that really bug me. I guess. Yeah, you know? I kind of wish CrossFit would just have a little bit more balls and be like, "Sorry, yeah. girl, you, you put your yeah. score in wrong." Um, this is my cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, you know, you also you also got to think of it as let's just say for Matt Ryan when he was playing for the, like the last couple of years when he was playing for the Falcons. He had three different offensive coordinators back to back to back. And this is exactly like what CrossFit is. They've had CEOs and like new changes back to back to back. And so obviously like one group, the first group had their way of doing it this way. Then the next guy was just like, okay, we want to do it this way. And then now the next new guy is doing something completely different. So yeah, and you have you have all the woke idiots to thank for that. You know, all those people that bitched about Greg Glassman being quote racist mm -hmm. and saying all that shit. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Okay, you got what you wanted. You have something that's kind of like fucking shit. Like it's not it's dumb, dude. It's so fucking dumb. Yeah. So what do you think they can do to twi uh, to change it to make it better? I know we've talked about this before, media, but yeah, oh, yeah. Is there anything else? I, I, I would <sighs> I there's like for start they should fucking just hire me on their Instagram for for example like did you see them post stupidly that like the winner of workout two posted a sub 13 time or something like that and they also posted like on dot com um I think it was workout two for for a dot com workout and then like in the notes 
like it said, hey, advanced athletes should do this in sub. Oh yeah, so dude, I saw you that. Should, yeah. oh, my God. I'm like, holy shit! Like these are this is the fucking bare minimum shit that like you guys can't get right. And that's that's literally all I'm asking CrossFit to do is just get the bare minimum stuff correct. Like just keep the brand strong, look badass, yep. fucking get shit right. And that, that's yep. all I want them to do. I also don't understand why they don't just go for the low hanging fruit. Like why didn't they pump the barbell spin when he had uh, Colt Mertens go against Jake Berman for a hundred bar face. Yes, that was a good one too. Yeah, why no. didn't, yeah, why didn't they just piggyback on Savon when he had the fittest um, uh, midget uh, dwarf? Murray yes. do a hundred bar face and Burpees for time. That would pump up the adaptive division so much. And it's mm -hmm. like just all it takes is a repost or a tag or something by CrossFit. It's so so fucking easy to do. It's well, just he, even Ty even Tyson Bajan, the well, he was a starting quarterback for the Bears. He does these CrossFit. And the only way they found out was because of Savon. And so then they try to pump him up after that. Like after he was on the Savon podcast for like like how like a, a couple months before they even yeah. got him to do, get on a CrossFit. So yeah, I mean, so literally I, I just if, if they want to improve, just go for the fucking low hanging fruit, man. Just do the bare minimum right. That's all I care about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have to get going soon, but um, I want to do final thoughts. So I can't. I'm getting her out of here. <laughs> Sorry. So, so pool boy, what are your final thoughts? Just on life in general or what? Yeah. Anything. I, I know the girls, I know the girls away in Australia right now. So, and she did her first podcast too. She, I just, she DM yeah, me, she, uh, she, she, she DM me today. She yeah. She had a good time. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very interesting uh, dude. Apparently, he just interviews buff women. So maybe he's got like a fetish or something. Probably. Interesting. But yeah, you know, she's she's doing great. She's, well, at least she's doing the best she can. She, you know, I had to play uh, a therapist a lot for her during the open, you know, because she's doing these workouts by herself, foreign environment, no judge, no community, no one really to, to, to be around with her, you know. So that was... Uh, an interesting, you know, road to, to go through in, in the relationship, which was, which was fine. Now, you know, she's happy to be past it and, and just focus on regular training. And I'm kind of excited for the same thing, you know, get back to regular training, know, know what I need to work on. And, and, um, you know, I just have all these fun ideas in my head that I want to, you know, help do help promote, you know, I'm always doing my part to help, you know, bump the, Savon podcast and I'd, I'd love to do you know do some more things to help bump bump your podcast up and and uh, all that and you know I definitely had FOMO watching uh, Lindsay cheat cheat on me with another team and and uh, you know selfishly I'm kind of happy that they didn't make it because now it's like yeah you fucking ditched a, a hot Ferrari Whoa. for a fucking Honda 68 Honda you know Listen, I will never say I'm not good. You didn't make indie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lindsay, what's your final Sassy. thoughts? Sassy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. My final thoughts. You having a baby? Oh. Is that your final thought? You're going to have a child soon? The, uh, yeah, we're going to start trying probably. Yeah. So I up. might be taking a break next year. We'll see. I'll come back strong for 35. That's that's my new goal, I think. I think my goal is to make the new CrossFit Games things for old people. I think that's going to be my, my new goal because I think my window for the regular side of CrossFit is probably passed. <laughs> Well, well, you know what? You know what's funny. I uh, I interviewed Nick Urankar, and like he won the Masters division, the first, I think, the thirty five to. The, he was my coach for a while. Yeah, so he, so he was telling me he's like, yeah, I had a chance to go team, and I I decided not to do it. I just I went individual because you're getting the same amount of money, and you don't have to deal with anybody. You just deal with yourself if you go individual. Mm. I hate individual personally, even like the, even like these indie workouts. I'm like, man, I had so much fun with my team for qualifiers. Team's just so much more fun. In my opinion, I love team, but yeah, it is fun, but no one gives a shit about teams, honestly. I, yeah, but I, I don't, do or, or masters that. either. I don't so. do it for that. Yeah, it's true. I, I mean, I didn't that. give a shit, honestly, either last year. I, I had a great time. I had a blast. Yeah. I like, I just, dude, there's the semifinal floor. It's just, it's such a cool experience. 
you know, as for like the attention or whatever, I don't give a shit. I just had a great time. I would have liked to get back there this year, but it is what it is. Everything happens for a reason, right? So, yep, yep. So maybe not. there is the next year. So, all right. So my final thoughts. So first of all, I want to thank you guys for coming on, Pool Boy. Always, it's always a good time. This, I think this is the fourth time you've been on my podcast. Oh my gosh! So, yeah, so. so yeah, it's so that and. uh Lindsay, thank you for coming on. I, I really do appreciate it. And like, I, I, I literally thought of putting you guys on at the same time, like kind of, you know, like last week. And I'm like, gosh, I get, I should get these two guys on. That'd be a good, that'd be a good one. Kind of yeah, like, can we, can we do another one and bring Danny into it? I was and just like, gonna say and that. Like, you we can't can, not include Luke. Then you have the, uh, the the touch and go gang. We can be like the 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 touch ourselves gang or something. You know. Well, well, I, ser seriously, I, have, I. That the, you guys would be the third group, I, so like literally it'd be like you guys and like the outnumbered group, and then the touch and go gang. So, so yeah, we'll, we'll come up with a name. We'll come up with a name. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, well, well, thank you for guys for coming up and coming on. And I, I'm kind of curious to kind of see how semifinals for the Masters adaptive and all, obviously the teenagers too. How that's I, gonna? I have out. a Masters athlete in semis, so I'm Let's excited go, Mike. to coach Let's go. him. Shout out Mike. Big Mike. Let's go. Shout out Mike Shaw. Yeah, so I'm kind of see, kind of see how that works. Even semifinals for the elite athletes too. So yeah, that's that's funny because we have uh, you have an, an old person at your gym. I have a <laughs> young person. person. <laughs> I have a young person at my gym competing in the uh, age group. Oh so no shit! Shout out Caden Sleber, uh, 16 year old division. That's right. So, uh, but yeah. Thank you guys for watching the show and we out. See ya.